Hello fungi and welcome to the first channel about fungi. Today I would like to talk about killer yeast phenomenon. Some species of yeast are able to produce specific toxic proteins, which are lethal to competing sensitive yeast strains. These yeasts are called killer yeasts. The phenomenon was most intensively studied in the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae, also known as Baker's yeast. In general, secretion of killer toxins gives tremendous advantages to the killer yeasts. First of all, they help yeast strains outcompete others, protect against harmful microbes. These toxins also have valuable applications in biotechnology and provide insights into yeast genetics and ecology. The production of killer toxins is closely associated with the presence of helper LA mycovirus and a smaller satellite mycovirus called killer mycovirus M, which carries the genetic information necessary for encoding killer toxins. The co-infection of yeast cells with both helper LA and satellite M mycoviruses is what triggers the production of these lethal toxins. It's worth mentioning that the helper mycovirus alone is insufficient to induce the killer phenotype, and yeast cell infections with this virus typically proceed without visible symptoms. Both mycoviruses are classified as double-stranded RNA viruses from the family Totiviridae. The helper LA virus contains the genetic information for two key proteins, the capsid protein, which functions to safeguard the viral genetic material, and the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, or in short RDRP, which serves for replication of viral genome. In contrast, the genome of the M-killer mycovirus encodes only one protein, PPTOX, namely the killer toxin. It lacks the necessary genes for encapsidation and replication. Instead, it relies on the capsid proteins and polymerase from the LA mycovirus. From this, we can draw two significant conclusions. First, the M mycovirus cannot independently replicate itself or sustain its existence, consequently preventing the synthesis of the killer toxin. And second, this clarifies why the LA mycovirus is referred to as the helper because it supplies the crucial proteins that enable the M killer virus to maintain its replicative cycle. Four types of killer mycoviruses have been described so far. M1, M2, M28, and M LAS. They bear in genes for toxins K1, K2, K28, and K LAS respectively. So let's talk a bit more detailed about the toxin. The pipitox toxin, which is produced by virus, is not mature and overgoes some post-translational modifications in specific organelles of fungal cell. This not mature toxin consists of several domains, pre, pro, alpha, gamma, and beta. First of all, immature toxin goes to the endoplasmic reticulum, where the pre subunit is cleaved. The protein changed conformation once a single disulfide bond between alpha and beta subunits is appeared. Then, this form of toxin is translocated to the Golgi system, where the rest of modifications happened, including cleavage of pro region and the intramolecular gamma sequence, leading to formation of mature toxin, which consequently will be secreted by the cell of killer yeast with help of secretory vesicles. Regarding the mechanism of action, toxins K1 and K28 have undergone the most extensive investigation. Despite the fact that both toxins have similar structure or composition, their mode of action is completely different. K1 toxin initially binds to the beta-1,6 glucanes, or manoproteins, in the yeast cell wall as primary receptor. This binding is thought to either concentrate the toxin at the cell wall or bring it in close contact with the target cell membrane. In the second step, toxins move to the cell's inner membrane and interacts with a secondary receptor, Cre1P. It is an yeast cell surface protein anchored to the plasma membrane. Once at the plasma membrane, toxin K1 creates ion channels that allow specific ions to pass through, which leads to the disrupting of membrane function and cell death. Next, let's look at the mechanism of action of K28 toxin. After binding to the surface of a sensitive cell, killer toxin K28 enters the cell through the endocytosis, an active transport of molecules into the cell. After being internalized, the toxin 
follows the reverse route of secretion pathway, reaching the cytoplasm, specifically the cytosolic side of the endoplasmic reticulum. The beta subunit is subsequently marked further for the osomal degradation, whereas the alpha subunit enters the nucleus, blocks DNA synthesis, arrests cell in early S phase of the cell cycle, and causes cell death. Self-immunity is the ability of an organism, cell, or system to protect itself from harm or damage caused by its own processes or products. In the context of yeast that produce killer toxins, they often have self-immunity mechanisms to safeguard themselves from the toxic effects of their own toxins. Immunity to the toxin K1 is still understudied, however, several models of immunity were proposed. One of them is oversaturation of membrane receptor by not mature pipitox molecule. The mature toxin attaches to the cell wall receptor of resistant cell. At the same time, immature pipitox molecule binds to K1 cell membrane receptor, and K1 toxin cannot exploit the cell membrane receptor its cytotoxic action in the context of K28 self immunity. K28 enters the resistant cell, initiating the formation of a complex comprising mature and immature toxins. Subsequently, the mature toxin is marked by the cell for degradation, leading to the disassembling of the mature immature toxins complex. This breakdown ultimately results in the degradation of the mature K28 toxin within the resistant cell.